Check, 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 check. We back early. We back early. So early, I don't know where my headphones at. Man, we got to get on top of this. We got to get on. <laughs> Lunch break chronicles. Why lakum salam, sir? <laughs> Hey, you, hey, you nation of Islam Muslim or, or, or Eastern Persuasion Muslim? Which one? <laughs> you know what I mean? If you nation of Islam, Walaikum well, Salam, sir. And if you Eastern Persuasion, it's Walaikum well, Salam, Walaikum Salam, Walaikum Salam, Walaikum Salam. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> you know, people get mad at me when I joke like that. I got to stop playing all the time. You know what I mean? Anyway, family, I'm still getting. One, two. Check one, two. Can I be heard? Can I be heard? Check one, two. Can I be heard? I haven't even shared this yet. You know what I mean? How y'all doing today, family? How y'all doing today? I got to come in early, man, because I told you I'm going to follow this story all the way to uh, uh, to the conclusion. So um, let me know if y'all still with me. Are y'all with me? Can you hear me? How do I sound? Am I good? I mean, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two, check one, two. <laughs> hey, hey, chief, man, this thing is developing, man. Man, listen, this thing is so developing, man. I might have to do two a day. <laughs> I mean, I might have to do two a day. Listen, I'm to the point right now where I'm finding stuff before everybody. I've been finding stuff before everybody, and I think it's very interesting as a breakdown. But man, oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Um, uh, Lunch Break Chronicles in the building. I like that. I like that title, Lunch Break Chronicles. He said, "Assalamu alaikum, family," and I say, uh, "Wa alaikum salam, sir." If you a nation of Islam Muslim, I say, "Wa alaikum salam, sir." If you are a uh, Eastern persuasion Muslim, I say, uh, "Wa alaikum salam, ratabalam do the law." <laughs> now let me stop. Steve next go. Steve next go go on hiatus again if I keep playing like that. Let me stop. <laughs> Steve X, don't go on hiatus, man. Come on, man. I am just playing. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, you can't play. You can't play. You can't play all time. You can't play all time, Grand Chief. You know what I mean? Just because you say you Muslim, that don't make you different from me being Muslim. So let's stop playing, Grand Sheik. With the, 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 enough with the games. On with the story. All right, Stephen X. I got you. <laughs> Ain't that funny how I talk in like third person for, <laughs> for my brother Stephen X? <laughs> anyway. <coughs> Pardon me, family. Welcome to another edition of Morse World TV. Uh, I am your host, Brother Tahaka Bay, and I'm the host with the most. I'm not like the most of the, 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 the YouTubers or bloggers. I like to have fun every step of the way. It is what it is uh, because I am who I am. Uh, Thurman Smart said, man, you early today, brother. I'm going to have to go early. I'm probably going to have to go twice a day because this thing is developing, 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 family. And I'm going to get straight to it because I got to get back to work. Also, I got today is the Friday. It's Friday, holy day for all Muslims all over the world. I got things to do this evening. Oh, my goodness. I might have to go later on tonight. What's up, Big Mom? Man, listen, if you all appreciate an early broadcast, please just hit the thumbs up. Let me know. And then I will go out my way to do things like this. Um, Because I'm going to tell you, sometimes them late night ones, I got to get up at six in the morning and prepare the children and then get myself ready to, to, to uh, put in my daily toiling. You know what I'm talking about? Man, it be working me sometimes. But the reason that I do my show in the evening is because the family be knocked out. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? If the family be knocked out at night and they ain't got to worry about the children, daddy, daddy. Y'all know I'm like a half, a hundred plus one uh, uh, with toddlers and infants. You know what I mean? I'm like a half, a hundred plus one with toddlers and infants, man. And you know what I mean? You see these big old jokers here? Man, once they start getting red and getting tired, man, man, they hey, hey, baby watching yourself. I'm trying to tell you, I be knocked out. Baby, daddy, daddy. You know what I mean? <laughs> 
You heard about the NYC earthquake? See, that's what I'm saying, Golden Child. I haven't heard about that yet. But anyway, family, I'm going to get straight to it, family. Family, did you hear about? Now, Golden Child said, did I hear about the NYC earthquake? Did you hear about the lawyer for uh, uh, um, the one that represents the case against Diddy? Um, have you heard about the sanctions that they're trying to put on him? That's how it worked. That's how it work. I'm trying to tell you, when you come after these people that's connected, ultimately, they will come after you. You hear what I say? They will come after you. And so now the story is, is that they are coming after Big Bro. Ah, yeah. Wait, let me see if I can find them real quick. They're coming after Big Bro. Let me, let me see. I think I got him right here. This is the guy, Tyrone Blackburn. He is the one that files the lawsuit, that filed the lawsuit on Diddy. Um, and not only did he file the lawsuit on Diddy Farad, he also is um, the one who is also filing the lawsuit for, um, I think her name is Grace uh, against Diddy's son that we'll be talking about in a few minutes. But one of the things that, that matter of fact, let's talk about. Let's see if we can talk about that right now. Let's see if we can talk about that right now. Nothing to it but to do it. You know what I mean? Good afternoon. I am she. Okay. Well, okay. And I am he. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I like. I hey for real though. I get a kick off people handles on YouTube. Um, I don't mess with Twitter that much. It's too toxic. But YouTube handles. I am. She and I am he. <laughs> but anyway, family, let me get into it. Let me get into it. So yeah, this is hey, this is something, man. This is something of a roller coaster of a of a um of a story at this point. It's it it, it really is. Let me let me close all these tabs. It's a roller coaster of a story at this point. So let me see if I can get to um the first one I want to get to is uh Diddy's son. That's the one I want to get to first because that is, and I'm working on getting the paperwork for that, but this is the guy, Tyrone Blackburn. Matter of fact, hold up, hold up. I don't even know which story to touch first. They all, they all are all over the place. You know what I mean? Let, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's get with the first one I just said. Let's get with um, Mr. Blackburn first because that's fresh off the press. I mean, I just seen that a few minutes ago on uh, Credited to all hip -hop .com. um so let me let me let me go here real quick this stuff is it's is unfolding it's unfolding like a, a a a wet napkin i'm trying to tell you um anyway yeah so over here is the story family and i'm about to break it down to you in a second give me one second here it is here it is right here. Lawyer suing Diddy referred to grievance committee amid salacious celebrity lawsuit. If you're not familiar uh, with uh, bro, he did a lawsuit against Nicki Minaj. I'm really not sure how that turned out. He also did the lawsuit against T.I. and Tiny. Um, and I don't know if it's still in the courts or not. Don't quote me on none of that because I'm really getting abreast to a lot of this stuff, man. This stuff is a lot. Um, but anyway, he filed the lawsuit on Nicki Minaj. He filed a lawsuit representing somebody on T.I. and Tiny where they were allegedly having their own personal freak offs with about, I think about, if I'm not mistaken, supposedly, allegedly, 11 people came forth and um, so... A, a grievance committee regulate lawyers. Absolutely. So um, with this being said, this is fresh off the press. Now, let me let me just run it real quick. Um, in this, it says the attorney suing Diddy faces scrutiny over his litigation tactics and high profile cases prompting judicial judicial uh Judicial, you know I'm a butcher word, so work with me. Concern. The attorney who filed a 30 minute law, a 30 minute, 30 million blockbuster lawsuit. Let me get my words right. A 30 million blockbuster lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs on behalf of Rodney Lil Rod Jones for CT 
is in legal trouble of his own. But that's what happens, family. That's what happens. These people going to come together. They about to rally together. They got to save the brand. It says Ty- Tyrone Blackburn has been referred no, that don't move too fast. Tyrone Blackburn has referred to the Southern District of New York Grievance Committee for his disturbing pattern of intentionally filing salacious lawsuits in federal court. The referral handed down by Judge Denise Cote on Wednesday, April 3rd, stems from concerns over Blackburn's approach to filing cases, which doesn't seem that bad to me, but hey, who am I? I'm not an attorney. Um. It says Judge Cote or Cote, maybe, I don't know, uh, pointed to a pattern in Blackburn's conduct that suggests an intent to leverage federal court proceedings to attract media attention, tarnish defendant's reputation with sensational allegation and coerce swift uh, settlements. Coerce? You get... That's odd to me. Anyway, the judge decision followed a recent filing accusing attorneys Liang, I may be, Fisher, and Michael T. Tubrin Fiedek Burn, I think, of legal malpractice. Okay. Judge Judge Cote claimed Blackburn was sloppy in conducting his due diligence on the districts where the lawsuit should have been filed. She pointed to five other instances where the attorney proceeded with his legal actions anyway. In other words, I think that's saying that he's following he's filing these cases in the wrong jurisdiction. You understand what I'm saying? Um, but I don't see that as a big thing. I mean, hey, because normally, normally what they do is they will uh they will strike that, um, throw it out without prejudice, and he just refile it in another place. So, but uh, it doesn't seem that bad to me. But anyway, who am I? Um, it's a Blackburn case um, which purportedly failed to fulfill Rule 11 obligation, a legal standard ensuring claims are well-founded. Okay, I get that. Um, be- become Became a focal point for the court's concern. See, I got a case coming up. I should look at that because I don't think these claims are well-founded. But anyway, an unreasonable inference inference, inference uh, from Blackburn's pattern of behavior is that he improperly filed cases in the federal court to garner media attention, embarrass defendants with salacious allegations, and pressures defendants to settle quickly. Judge Cote wrote in her admonishment of Blackburn's tactics. Regardless of Blackburn's intention, his actions in this prior to cases in prior cases indicate a repeated failure to meet his Rule 11 obligation. So basically, I think what that's saying is that regardless if he gets a judgment in his favor or in his client's favor, he still is not meeting the integrity of of, of really researching to see if these uh, points uh, could be proven in court uh, legally and lawfully. So I think that's what that's all about. But anyway, it says last week, oh, let's talk about all hip hop. The judge recommendation, the judge recommendation and grievance committee ultimate decision could also impact the credibility of Tyrone Blackburn. Blackburn of the high-profile lawsuits. The grievance committee, committee is now tasked to determine what action should be taken against Tyrone Blackburn, who has sued high-profile celebrities like Diddy, Mickey, Nicki Minaj, Kenneth Petty, T.I., and Tiny, and other Jane Doe suing Diddy for assault. Now, let me stop right there for a minute, and let me say this. Let me say this. I really don't see that as being that bad. But again, who am I? I really don't see that as being that bad. You know what I mean? If you file in something in the wrong district or um, you haven't researched the case uh, to to the letter, but you you walking away with the bag, man, maybe that maybe that doesn't meet the standard of integrity as it relates to an attorney but the the other opposing side attorney should just go on straight to trial 
I would imagine. These people got bread. It ain't like, you know what I mean? Me, I be fighting stuff pro se. These people got bread. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that. I, man, this, this, this media thing, though, you never know. You never know the direction of this media thing because I don't see that as that bad. I, I really don't. I don't see that that is that bad at all. You know what I mean? Um, with that being said, let me um skip this real quick. Yeah, I don't see that as being that bad at all. That that uh. but anyway, next up we have we have uh Diddy's son. I think it's Diddy's son. Um if y'all if y'all been sleep uh last night, uh well this morning it was reported um that his son is now implicated in a new uh, um, S.A. lawsuit. If you're unaware of that, um, it's it's here. It's here. Yeah, man, it's, it's it's getting it's getting hot. It's getting hot up in here. Do you know what I mean? It's definitely getting hot up in here. And we're gonna run through this real quick. Give you an update on this. Let me break it down for you. Let me tell you something, family. Of all things. Of all the things that are going on right now, um, somebody somebody probably going down. Somebody is probably going down. Ain't no doubt in my mind. Somebody got to be going down. And I ain't talking about Murray J. Blige. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, and, and I ain't talking about, uh, matter of fact, no Diddy, no Diddy. Let me just go with this, man. Sean Diddy Combs' son accused of S.A. in lawsuit that also names music mogul as defendant. A woman alleges she was attacked while working on a yacht in late 2022. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Man, did we ever imagine that we would see this day where can't nobody break my pride. Can't nobody hold me down. Oh, no. You got to keep on moving. The motivational guy. Meet this kind of scrutiny or accusations. I, I never seen this one coming. Now, my cousin, I got a cousin that's seen it coming, but I never seen this one coming. Um. Anyway, let's, let's just roll with it. Let's just roll with it. See what we got in this one. I mean. Um, in this we have, it says Los Angeles, Sean Diddy Combs, who is a subject of a federal S.A., I mean S.T. investigation, has been named as defendant in a new lawsuit that alleges his son S.A.'d a woman while she was working on a yacht. The music mogul had chartered for a trip at the end of 2022. The allegations, the allegation is the latest of a wave of lawsuits accusing Combs 54 of SAST and engaging in criminal activity. He has denied all allegations, calling them sickening. In the suit filed Thursday, so this was yesterday, this is fresh off the press. In a suit filed Thursday in Los Angeles County Superior Court, Grace O, I'm just going to say O, you feel me? Grace O alleges that Christian Combs, 26, essayed her in late December 2022 while she was working on a boat charter that had been sold as a wholesome family excursion but turned into a hedonistic environment which mean that was in that, in that words that's the, the 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 nice way to say uh uh what was in the lawsuit called a freak off anyway the alleged assault happened just days before sean combs ho hosted a new year's eve yacht party with a long list of celebrity guests i told you he's going to leverage those celebrity guests He's definitely going to leverage those celebrity guests. I see it. I, there's no doubt in my mind that he's going to leverage those celebrity guests and say, if y'all playing games, we calling everybody out. I see it. I see Diddy ain't playing. Diddy going just going out just like the guy 
from New Jack City, Nino Brown. I see it happening. Um, with that being said, um, it goes on to say that Christian Combs is accused of S.A., S.H., and infliction of emotional distress in the lawsuit. Sean Combs is being sued for premises liability as the person who chartered the yacht and for aiding and abetting his son in the alleged assault. Representative for Christian and Sean Combs did not immediately respond to a request for comment Thursday night. Sean Combs has denied all of the recent allegations against him. Like father, like son. Man, Tyrone Blackburn, man. <laughs> and you know that they got a section again. <laughs> Tyrone, Tyrone Blackburn, man, who is representing um, Grace Grace O said Thursday night after the suit was filed. He said, like, father, like son. Ah, oh, man. It gives us no joy or pleasure in filing this suit against Christian Combs, who has clearly adopted his father's pattern and practice of depravity. depravity. Um, now, now, this is the meat of the allegation. In her suit, Grace alleges that Christian Combs drugged and essayed her. She included transcriptions of audio clips that she states are evidence of her denying his advances as he gropes her. The suit states that the clip were recorded by producer by a producer in the studio. I wonder is that uh, Lil Ronnie O. What up, the original people? Grace, who was 25 at the time of the alleged assault, worked as a steward providing dinner and drink service on the yacht from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and witnessed partying and drug use between constant rotation of suspected freak workers. That's the best way I can put it. And celebrities. So here we go with them celebrities again. The suit states she also alleges in a complaint that she suspected bottles of alcohol were laced with drugs because women begin to fall over themselves, panic, or pass out after just one drink. Somebody might corroborate that. See, this stuff happens around a lot of people, man, and everybody ain't going to remain silent. Anyway, around December the twenty around December twenty eighth, twenty twenty two, Grace was informed that Christian Combs would be joining the party to record with music producer Rodney Lorod Jones. Uh oh, so he's a witness in the case in the yacht makeshift studio. The the suite the suit states. I'm sorry, I thought it was a studio suite, but not that. The suit states Christian Combs had been staying on shore at a villa, but often joined his father in the in the evenings, according to the suit. The woman the woman's suit alleges that he arrived heavily intoxicated and he had paid an inappropriate amount of attention to her. Christian then pursued Grace to take shots of to Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Christian then pressured Grace to take shots of tequila that she believes he brought on board according to the suit. After she took the shot, Grace states in the lawsuit, Christian Combs became aggressive and insisted she drink more. Grace became fearful and began to fear the effect of the tequila, which she quickly suspected had been spiked, the suit states. The situation escalated. Christian as Christian Chrome, uh, the situation escalated as Christian Combs groped uh, Grace's legs, breasts, behind, and uh, uh, V. This the suit alleges. I'm trying to make sure I don't get strikes, so I'm trying to watch my words. So if I fumble over this stuff because I'm just it's off the cuff, uh, work with me. This is no editing. This is raw off the cuff, but I don't want to get no strikes uh, uh, by saying the wrong things. So I'm watching. I'm I'm reading ahead, trying to adjust myself. So work with me. Work with me. Work with me. I did pass the third grade. Don't worry, don't worry about it. Anyway, O'Malley can be heard. I mean. Grace can be heard declining alcohol, saying she had to leave and telling Christian Combs to stop touching her with what sounds like 
kissing noises in the background. The audio was recorded by Jones. So Rodney Jones, Lil Rodney or Lil Rod, the producer who was in the studio during the alleged assault, who was alleged in his own lawsuit, he was required to record Sean Combs constantly and had hours of footage in which the music mogul and his staff allegedly engaged in criminal conduct. NBC News has heard two clips of audio transcribed in the suit purportedly from the night of December 28th, 2022, but has not verified who was recorded. Excuse me. You don't have to touch my legs like that. I'll move my legs where I want to. Grace is heard saying in the recording detailed in the suit. If I want to do this, then I will. You don't touch my legs like that. Quote unquote. Listen, you and everybody in the crew, Christian Combs allegedly replies. I can't. I have to go down. Uh, Grace says, I have to go down. And what, what that is going down to the cabinet. I mean, somebody said the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had a third grade education. Lunch break, stop, man. <laughs> I know I watched the comments. Anyway, it said Grace answered this way because she knew anyone in authority w uh, who could approve the request would be asleep and Christian Combs would, would not be able to contact them. This, the, the suit say, states, who can I talk to? <laughs> Christian, in this lawsuit, Christian was allegedly thirsty. He was super thirsty, uh, according to this, the wording in this lawsuit, allegedly. Um, who can I talk to? I'm going to say I requested you right now, Christian Cohn said, according to the suit. Well, you can take your hand off of my ASS for the first thing, Grace responded. Grace then attempted to resume her duties and finish her shift. Once she was able to leave the studio, the suit states. Christian Combs allegedly found her a short time later and insisted she find him a place to sleep. She directed him to the yacht cinema, where, which was used as an extra sleeping area where he blocked her in, the suit states. Christian Combs allegedly began to grope her and took off his clothes. He... His man was erect and he grabbed her arms and was trying to force plaintiffs to perform, to perform, uh, um, I guess the word would be fellatio uh, on him. Uh, the suit says the suit includes photos of bruising of grace forearm and allege it was caused when Christian Combs grabbed her. Grace fought him off until someone walked in, according to the suit. <laughs> according to the suit. Man, this is some wild stuff. The alleged assault had a deep impact on Grace's mental health as well as her professional and personal lives, the suit says. When Grace complained to the yacht captain the next day, the suit alleges the captain did not believe her and failed to investigate. She alleges that the captain retaliated against her. She was terminated in May 2023. So that's probably uh, approximately around six months later. Her mental health deteriorated and the woman had anxiety and panic attacks as well as severe suicidal ideations. The suit says Grace alleged that her emotional strain affected by physical health and that she developed an eating disorder and an epileptic seizures following the assault. She is seeking unspecified damages. I am here to fight for those who can't fight for themselves. I applaud Grace for being so brave to come forward with her truth. Attorney Rodney S. Diggs said of his kind. Okay, so this Rodney S. Diggs. Hopefully her story will inspire others to come forward. So maybe I was wrong. So I'm sorry. Let me correct. Uh, Rodney Diggs is, re is, is representing her. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. 
So, so, so yeah. But family, have you, have you with this cryptonomics? Man, I had to jump on this crypt real fast, bro. I had to jump on this one real fast, bro. This one here. Uh, uh, man, 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 it's fresh off the press, man. But, but let me tell you something. Has anybody, so we got 183 people in here, and we know it's early because I usually don't go early, but has anybody seen the Jane Doe lawsuit? That's what I want to know. Has anybody seen the Jane Doe lawsuit? Well, I found out, I think it was yesterday. I can relax now. I found out, I think it was yesterday, that um that the Jane Doe lawsuit, the judge had determined that the lady that was hiding her identity or concealing her identity for whatever reason, um, now she has to reveal her identity for the case to go on. But press has anybody seen the Jane Doe lawsuit? Man, man, man. We're gonna read it in a minute. We're going to read it in a minute, but I'm going to tell you, the Jane Doe lawsuit, ah, man, it's, listen, it's all weaved together with some of the most egregious allegations. Oh, my goodness. This one here, I was just skimming through it. I just came up on it because I got the other, I got the little Rodney lawsuit. Um, I'm working on getting this lawsuit, but, uh, 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 you know, uh, King Combs lawsuit, let me see. No question. Just, just ask knowing my child was not at fault. What happened? What Case Cell talking about? Who is Case Cell? I don't know who Case Cell is. Case Cell say their child is not at fault. So, so anyway, um, I don't know what that means, man. That might be a bot. That's what them bots be looking like. They be talking about stuff ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> Somebody say, I've been hearing that Jane Doe is Tierra Marie from Rockefeller. Well, let me tell you what she has to say then. Thank you, K-Robin. Let me tell you what, hey, family, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, family. I usually don't do this, but I will be going live on Fridays Um because we're going to report these stories, you know, as they develop. And they're developing at an alarming rate. You know what I mean? But let me, let me let's, let's get to it. We need to see this Jane Doe case. If you haven't heard of the Jane Doe case, here it is. I was, I was, I was, I was to a degree taken aback. You know what I mean? If you file it all the way through, I like to see you be at the courthouse. Listen, I ain't got no problem about that. If my if if my money is right to get me some security, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely, I'll be at the courthouse. I mean, it's gonna be where, where it's gonna be at. Cali, New York. Who knows? Where's these things filed at? Nah, I ain't got no problem with that. But anyway, let's look at this Jane Doe one. This Jane Doe one, real quick. All right, y'all ready? This Jane Doe. Let me see. Hold on, 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 hold on. Hey, family, put put the baby, put the baby, put the babies to bed for a minute in the morning. Give him, give him, give him, give him, give him. Um, he said, "Go back, look at the previous comment." K cell. I don't see it. I'm, I, I'll, I'll be catching. I'll be catching comments late. I'll be catching comments late. Anyway, check this out. Preliminary statement on November 16, twenty three, Cassandra Ventura, aka Cassie, filed a thirty five page lawsuit in which she exposed Sean Combs for subjecting her to nearly a decade of physical and S A. Emotional, punctured by taking ST and being forced to engage in a drug-fueled, non-consensual encounters with other men. Ordinary when a lawsuit such as Ventura is filed that involves events that took place Long ago, witnesses are few and far between, and evidence are hard to muster. Not so for the claims against Mr. Cone. Within minutes of filing, uh, salient facts 
of Miss Ventura claims were confirmed by various witnesses, including rival musicians who car combs blew up. All right, but let me get to the, I want to get to this part. I want to get that. Here we go. Let's let's move. Let's move on down. What's up? What's up, Miss Cali? Cali Coco. Um, matter of fact, let's just go in. Let's just go in through it. I'll be trying to miss 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 some words so I won't get uh set the alarms off on um YouTube. But let's see if we can get through it. Only a few days later, two other lawsuits was filed against Mr. Combs, and one plaintiff, Joy Dickerson Neal, alleged that Mr. Combs drugged and as ate her when she was a college student. The other lawsuit accused Mr. Combs and single Aaron Hall of forcing the plaintiff and another identified unidentified woman into non-consensual, you already know. At the same time, a fourth lawsuit was filed. This one against Mr. Combs' company and defended Harvey, Harvey, Harvey Pierre the longtime president of Bad Boy Entertainment Holdings. The suit alleges that Mr. Pierre used his position of power at Bad Boy to groom and S.A. his former assistant and that Bad Boy looked the other way at the time. Now, this is the fifth lawsuit filed against Mr. Combs. Do you hear this? This is the fifth lawsuit filed against Mr. Combs in the last three weeks. Incredibly, the allegations brought by Miss Doe are in many ways even more egregious than those brought by the prior victims. This is what I was talking about. I skimmed through it this morning and I said, good goodness gracious. Anyway, are y'all ready? Press seven if you're ready. Let me get, I gotta get a little sip. I gotta get a little sip for that. Y'all ready? Huh? Oh man, what happened? Hold up, is we still live? I joined acting funny. All right. Oh, that might be my um. I'm watching it on my phone too, so sometimes my phone is just. All right, cool. All right, that's, I'm just making sure y'all get the thumbs up too. Let me just go ahead and bam. Make sure y'all get the thumbs up too. All right, I'm still alive. All right, you know they shut me down real quick. You know me because because all of this is connected to moist mouth too. So they shut me down in a minute. So let's get to it. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. Here we go, family. Let the children have them snacks. Take a snack nap because this is about to get a little bit raggedy up in here. Let me let me let me make sure I see this on my um. Yeah, y'all share why why I got it ready. I just want to make sure that I can see what's going on at the same time. All right. So give y'all time put the put the babies for their snack nap. I mean, let the babies get their snack nap. <laughs> All right, here we go. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. Now the fifth lawsuit filed against. This is now the fifth lawsuit filed against Mr. Combs in the last three weeks. No, I didn't see your first comment, KSL. You got to write it all over again. I didn't see your first comment. They disappear, brother. I can't go back. That many of the, what's the name? I didn't see your comment, brother. Anyway, this is now the fifth lawsuit filed against Mr. Combs in the last three weeks. Incredibly, the allegations, you hear what I'm saying? The allegations brought by Miss Doe are in many ways even more egregious than those brought by his prior victims. Specifically in 2003 when she was only 17 years old and in the 11th grade. Miss Doe was S trafficked and ganged by Mr. Combs, Mr. Pierre, and a third assailant. In short, now this way it gets crazy. Remember, she was 17. 
When she was just a teenager, Miss Doe met Miss Pierre and a third assailant in a lounge in Detroit, Michigan area. While at the lounge, Mr. Pierre insisted that he was best friends with Mr. Combs and even called Mr. Combs with Miss Doe. Mr. Combs convinced Miss Doe, who was half his age at the time, to accompany Mr. Pierre and a third assailant on a private jet to come to his studio in New York City. Before they left for the private jet, Mr. Pierre smoked crack cocaine in the bathroom at the lounge. <laughs> this is, come on, man. Is this that stuff that really go on? Bro, you got to write the full comment, KSL. I can't focus on, I want to see what you said, but I can't keep going off track with the story. Write your full comment. It, it, it made, um, it said Mr. Pierre was smoking them stones, man. <laughs> Let me focus on this. I don't ever know. Who knows? People, people uh, smoke them stones in 2023. I thought that was, I thought that was, I thought that was over with. I guess not. He's smoking stones, man. Goodness gracious. Anyway, let's let it rock. It said, before they left for the private jet, Mr. Pierre smoked crack cocaine in the bathroom at the lounge, in which he also SA'd Miss Doe by forcing her to give him O. You already know. Mr. Pierre, third assailant, another gentleman, then escorted the high schooler to a private jet, which flew them to Teterboro, New Jersey. There were SUVs awaiting the group at Teterboro, and the four of them were driven to Diddy's House Recording Studio, a studio famously owned and operated by Mr. Combs and Bad Boy. Oh, he said he got children want to get into the industry. Well, long as you long listen, listen, listen. I'll talk about that in a minute after I finish this. Because there's nothing wrong with that. As long as you're protective and know what you're doing. Um, while at the studio, Mr. Combs and his associates, including Mr. Pierre, plied Miss Doe with drugs and alcohol. As the night wore on, the 17-year-old Miss Doe became more and more inebriated, eventually to the point that she could not possibly have consented to uh, relations with anyone, much less someone twice her age. While at the studio, Miss Doe was gang taken advantage of by Mr. Combs, the third assailant, and Mr. Pierre in that order. So basically, she's saying that Combs, then the assailant, and then Mr. Pierre uh, took advantage of her, had relations with her. Um, man. Mr. Combs then watched on as the third assailant, who Miss Doe had not even realized had begun to have with her And R-A-P-E-D, Miss Doe, as she told him to stop. After the third assailant was finished, Mr. Pierre took his turn at R-A-P, you get it? This is insane. Miss Doe, and then violently forced her to give him, oh, you already know during which Miss Doe was choking and struggling to catch her breath. When Mr. Pierre finished, he left Miss Doe room in the bathroom alone. He left Miss Doe in the bathroom alone. Miss Doe fell into the fetal position and lay on the floor. Her private parts was in pain. Finally, after the period of time, Miss Doe regained her bearings. However, she could barely stand up following the gang taken advantage of and had to be helped to walk out the building and back into a car. She was taken back to the airport and flown back to Michigan. However, she has very limited recollection, recoll recollection of the transport home, only remembers being in her car 
sometimes early in the morning. Unlike many victims who have come forward after decades, Miss Doe can prove that she's not only met Mr. Combs on the night in question, but was in the studio in New York City with him on that night. And remember when, when viewing these, Mr. Miss Doe is 17. So I don't know who somebody said who she was, but thank you so much, William Nail. Um, I don't know who said who she was. Thank you for the cash at William Nail. But this is the picture that she provided in her lawsuit to show that she was there. Now, remember, she is only 17. Bear in mind, she is only 17. You see this? Now, I think I think this is 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 one of what you would call the smoking gun. If I mean, I, remember she was only seventeen, and she's there on a man twice her age lap. Press seven if y'all still with me. Seventeen years old flown in on a private jet from Detroit to New York. Miss Doe has lived with her memories of this fatal, of this fateful night for 20 years, during which time she has suffered extreme emotional distress and has impacted nearly every aspect of her life. Come on now. Somebody say. Given the brave, given the brave woman who have come forward against Mr. Combs and Mr. Pierre in recent weeks, Miss Doe is doing the same. To that end, Miss Doe brings this action seeking injunction, declaratory, and monetary relief against defendants in violation of the Victims of Gender Motivated Violence Protected Protection Law, Gender Motivated Violence at NYC. Da, 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 da. Man, this is something else, ain't it? The court, the court has jurisdiction over this matter. And that's what they was talking about. I think they was talking about jurisdiction before. The court have jurisdiction over the matter pursuant. Uh, they got the legal code at this action. Involves citizens of different states and amount of controversy in this matter exceeds 75,000. Uh, the court have supplemental jurisdiction over the plaintiff, which I'm familiar with that. Um, that's not much. Um, plaintiff Jane Doe is a citizen of Canada. Defendant Sean Combs is a citizen of the state of California. Defendant Harvey Pierre is a citizen of the state of New York. Defendant, the third assailant, is upon information and belief uh, a citizen of the state of New York. Defendant Daddy House Recordings Incorporated Daddy House in, is a music media and entertainment company founded and owned by, what's the name, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Now, let's get to the what they call factual allegations. In 2003, Miss Doe was 17 years old, 11th grader, residing in a suburb of Detroit, Michigan. At the time, Mr. Combs was 34 years old, twice her age of Miss Doe, and one of the most well-known influential music artists of all time. It's about to get back. A decade earlier, Mr. Combs found a bad boy and installed his longtime friend, Mr. Pierre, into a role into the role of president. At the time, Mr. Combs had many connections to Michigan, including, among others, the Black Mafia family, BMF, a drug trafficking and money laundering organization organization that is root that is as rumored to have seeded bad boy. Now, I told you that there may be some connection to Big Meech. Uh, and Puffy, um, something going on there because I told you that Diddy is financing, I think, uh, I'm not Diddy, 
50 is partially financing the legal defense of BMF uh, uh, leader Big Meech, uh, and he's scheduled to be released from jail probably next year. I think he goes up for parole, if I'm not mistaken, 2025. But and, and in conjunction with that, he also got the rights to the BMF series that is 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 going on right this minute. So it leads me to believe that Puffy may there's a, allegedly may have something to do with the downfall of BMF. Nobody has ever made that connection. I'm the first one to allegedly make that connection that he possibly has something to do with the uh, criminal investigation that brought down BMF because as we seen the other day on the show, allegedly Puffy is or Diddy is or was an informant. According to uh, Gene, he also confirms that he went to uh, pass off papers with an FBI uh, 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 handler with Diddy and somebody else. So I I think I think this is uh, uh, something to watch unfold. Big Meech is getting out in 2025, allegedly. I think it is. And 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 and, and, and 50 have been financing um, the success of the BMF. Um, I guess you would call it um, autobiographical story. Um, but anyway, let me carry on. Saying that BMF rumored to have seated bad boy. According upon information and belief, Mr. Combs' associates, including Mr. Pierre and the third party assailant, spent a significant time in and around Detroit, Michigan. On the evening between the spring and fall of 2003, Miss Doe, Miss Doe uh, was out with friends. It was, a, it was not uncommon for her friends to frequent bars and lounges in Detroit area. Certain of Miss Doe's friends were well connected with people in the music industry. On the evening in question, Miss Doe. On the evening in question, Miss Doe was with friends in a lounge when she was approached by who she later learned was Mr. Pierre. Mr. Pierre was with his own friends, including the third assailant. Mr. Pierre and Mr. Pierre, the third assailant, and their friends were dressed in suits. Mr. Pierre repeatedly complimented Miss Doe's appearance, saying that she was hot. Among other things, he began talking about his self-described best friend and brother, Mr. Combs. Specifically, Mr. Pierre continually stated that Mr. Combs would love to meet Miss Doe. Mr. Pierre even called Mr. Combs and put uh, Miss Doe on the line. Mr. Combs told Miss Doe that he would love to meet her and that she uh, accompany uh, Mr. Pierre to New York City in a private jet. Shortly thereafter, Mr. Pierre directed Miss Doe to go with him into the bathroom at the lounge. Once inside the bathroom, Mr. Pierre began to smoke crack cocaine from what appeared to be an aluminum can. Oh my goodness, man. Good goodness and gracious. This is something. After, is this 1982? Is this 1982? It says, after he finished smoking crack, Mr. Pierre suddenly took out his private parts, demanded that Miss Doe suck his private parts, uh, and forced Miss Doe head down to perform things on his private parts. After sexually uh, Miss Doe, Mr. Pierre directed her to accompany him, the third assailant and the third member of their group to an airport in Pontiac, Michigan, where Signature, a fixed base operator, had prepared a private jet to take the four of them to New York City. Upon information and belief, the private jet landed in Teterboro Airport. Upon departing the jet, the two black S two black SUVs were awaiting the group. Man, they acting a fool with them. Miss Doe got into the SUV with Mr. Pierre and the third assailant, and a number of uh, and a member of the group went in a second SUV. The SUV brought the group to Diddy House Recording Studios, a recording studio, and hung out around and operated by um, Mr. Combs and Bad Boy. When Miss Doe arrived, she was escorted into the building where she distinctly remembers seeing a sign for the company Technicolor. 
Upon entering the studio, Miss Doe first encountered Mr. Combs. At the time she arrived, a female recording artist was using the studio as Mr. Combs and her parents watched on. She finished up shortly after Miss Doe arrived and left. While still in the studio section of, da of Daddy's house, Mr. Combs asked Miss Doe to sit on his lap and take a picture. A copy of the picture is below. I think that's um I think that's what we're looking at. Hold on. A copy of the picture is below. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, Miss Combs and Mr. Pierre, the third assailant began to ply Miss Doe, a 17-year-old child at the time, with copious amount of drugs and alcohol. With copious amount of drugs and alcohol. Hold on. Man, man. I got, I got, I got to see. I had to prepare myself to read these things because I'm reading it for the first time. Like you, I skimmed through it uh, in the beginning. It says, "While, while the evening became as blur, became a blur." Miss Doe does recall Mr. Coleman Pierre and the third assailant hitting on her incessantly, stroking her body, asking to see her ass, and telling, and telling her how hot and sexy she was. Various other pictures taken in the studio that night, leaving no doubt Miss Doe was in Mr. Combs' New York City studio with Mr. Combs on the night she was taken advantage of forcefully. As the night wore on, the 17-year-old Miss Doe became more and more inebriated, eventually to the point that she could not possibly have consented to having relations with anyone, much less someone twice her age. Nevertheless, that evening, Mr. Combs directed Miss Doe to accompany him to the bathroom at the studio. Once there, Mr. Combs removed Miss Doe's shirt and underwear and had relations from behind with his privates while she hung over the sink. Miss Doe did not consent to having relations with Mr. Combs, but he continued thrusting. At some point, Mr. Combs turned Miss Doe around to his face. He told her that he could not get off and asked her to squeeze his, his nipples. Oh, my God. Come on, man. This guy stopped, man. I'm sorry, family. I'm bringing you the real, the best way I can do it, man. This stuff is, this stuff is crazy, man. I'm sorry, man. Listen, this going to be my day job being a reporter. You know what I'm saying? But she asked him to squeeze his nipples as hard as she could to help him get off. He then turned her back around and continued to take advantage of her. <laughs> Good, good as a gracious. <laughs> Listen, family, this is the real world. Listen, I am a real grand sheik of the Morris Science Temple of America, and this is the real world. This is the real world. So when people say, man, grand sheik, you covering these stories? Yeah, this is the real world. And I think this story and stories like this needs as much exposure as it can get because this is unacceptable in our community in entertainment that we have bought into paid into supported and made it relevant for the world so yep i'm going to cover it no diddy uh, anyway he turned her back around and continued to take advantage of her without permission by this point miss doe Miss Doe was coming in and out of consciousness because of the drugs and alcohol she had been given by the defendants. Her next memory was looking up into the mirror above the sink to find that a third assailant had replaced Mr. Combs and was forcibly taking advantage of her from behind. Mr. Combs was watching the third assailant S.A. her, Miss Doe, from a chair outside of the bathroom. At this point, 
Miss Doe must. And, and this, listen to this. This is a common theme that Diddy is watching. Now listen, this is a common theme from different parties. Three, three different parties saying similar things uh, with, with certain variables. But anyway, after the third assailant was finished, he replaced, he was replaced by Mr. Pierre, who began to have non-consensual private part relations with Miss Doe before violently forcing her to give him oral relations. During the latter part of the SA, Mr. Pierre forced his private part into Miss Doe's mouth without her consent. Miss Doe remembers that Mr. Pierre was sweaty and that she had difficulty breathing. Oh my, I'm sorry, fam. I gotta report this. I, this is the real world, though. I gotta report it. It is what it is. While when I never heard how many people heard this one before? This, this is all new to me. When Mr. Pierre finished, he left Miss Doe in the bathroom alone. Miss Doe fell into a fetal position and lay on the floor. Her private parts was in pain. Finally, after a period of time, Miss Doe regained her bearings. However, she could barely stand up following the gang taken advantage of and had to be helped to walk out of the building and back into her car. She was taken back to the airport and flown back to Michigan. However, she has very limited recollection of the transport home and only remembers being in her car sometime early in the morning. Her underwear was missing as a result of being taken advantage of by Mr. Cohn, Mr. Pierre, and the third assailant, Miss Doe suffered significant emotional distress and feels the of shame and that plagued her life and personal relationships for over for 20 years. Miss Doe know that speaking out against the defendant would, would be extremely difficult and that she would likely be subjected to retaliation and defamatory slurs and attack. But she was 17. That's don't get forget. However, in November 2023, Ms. Doe read about the lawsuit filed against Mr. Combs by Cassandra Ventura, a.k.a. Cassie. Ms. Ventura's suit described a decade of physical and mental abuse. Most triggering for Ms. Doe was reading about Ms. Ventura's allegations of trafficking and being forced to have with other men against her will. Miss Doe obviously understand that she too had been trafficked and that Miss Combs, Mr. Combs' behavior in forcing women into, into non-consensual relations was not an isolated incident or unique only to Miss Ventura. Then, just days later, Miss Doe read about a case filed against Mr. Pierre. The suit alleged that Mr. Pierre used his position and power at Bad Boy to groom and S.A. his former assistant. Seeing two other women bravely speak out against Mr. Combs and Mr. Pierre, respectively, gave Miss Doe confidence to tell her story as well. As such, she files suit. Yeah. So that's, that's it. Whew. Well, that was a hard one to get to, I think, in some part. But yeah, family, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I just think, I just think where there's, where there's fire, where there's smoke, there's fire. I think there's some sort of fire going on. That's what I think. I think there's some sort of fire going on. That's a lot right there. It's a lot happening right there. And this thing is developing as we speak. So much is happening as we speak that I shut the computer down. I feel like I might got to go live again just to keep up with it, to keep everybody in tune as to what's going on. Um, I think the next thing, you know, one of the, one of the next stories is that Diddy, it's supposed to be helping the FBI to corner 
Jay-Z. Now, I don't know if that's tabloid talk. I'm not sure about if it's tabloid talk or not, but that Diddy is cooperating with the FBI. One of the reasons he didn't get locked up is because Diddy is cooperating with the FBI to corner Jay-Z and the unlifing of a woman that uh, he got pregnant while he was with, um, with Beyonce and he had to unlive her or they jointly had to unlive her for whatever reasoning that they came up with. So uh, that uh, that story is developing now. So I think with by next week, I think it's going to be start naming some stars because when Diddy put out that that video, I mean, when Diddy put out that video about family, people are not getting alerts, man. I might have to get a number, man, to let y'all know when I'm going live. I'm going to be going live a lot in the next few weeks. I already know um, because I think, I think, hey, family, let me ask you a question. No ego involved. Family, do you think I do uh, pretty good in digging up some unique parts of stories? Now, the stories might be common, but I be trying to grab stuff that I haven't heard yet and maybe you haven't heard yet. Press 7 if you think I do okay at that. I want to get better at it, but I think I be digging up stuff that I don't be hearing. I be hearing, but I don't be seeing the, the receipts. Press 7 if I do okay with that. If I do okay with that, then I think we might got something here because I be, I be, I be looking in my spare time, seeing what's going on because this stuff blows me away. I mean, it intrigues me for real. I mean, just to even read that case right there intrigues me. I never, I heard about Jane Doe, but I never knew the specifics about Jane Doe. And I think um, it's very unique, man. Thank you for the seven. So yeah, we got to keep this going. Um, so with that being said, family, yeah, we, okay. So we're going to keep this going. Uh, what I'll do is when I decide to go live, I will make the page earlier and I'll just continue to build on the page. And if I have to change it, I have to change it. I mean, um, I have to change, I have to change it. But man, I didn't know, I didn't know that great detail about Jane Doe. I mean, Miss Doe, I didn't know that. That 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 is very unique to uh this whole case for me. But with that being said, um, I'm looking for, I'm looking forward to the to the new developments. And as I get them, you will get them. So you go ahead at work um, and I'll take off if I need be. So don't forget to hit the thumbs up, hit the share, hit the cash app, hit the hit the whatever you can, because the more time I can cover these stories, uh, that's the less time I'm going to be out uh, uh, making the donuts elsewhere. But this is what I want to do for a living, actually. So. I'm trying to come up with ways to supplement my income so I can do this for a living. I'm not too bad at it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not too bad at it. I know I got some documentaries that I'm working on, um, things of that nature. I think my editing is pretty good. You know what I'm saying? I think my editing is pretty good. So, in fact, we're going to go out uh, uh, with one of these edits that I did last night for the show. And like I say, all this stuff takes time. So, I just want to say thanks each and every. And he said he would stick a slushy up a person. Oh my goodness! Um, so um, I think my editing is pretty good. I think all of my stuff uh, it can get better, but um, I'm gonna do all I can. So any support that you can offer to keep me in front of this lens, getting you the latest breaking news and crazy stuff that should not go on in our community, then by all means, by all means. Support. Let's go. And I wanted to get out. But they threatened to kill my mom. Who are you talking about, Mr. Brown? What they? They. Look at it. Kareem Akbar. That's right, the educated brother from the bank. He's the real head of the CMB. The brains behind the whole thing. I told you, this thing is bigger than you brown, and I got to listen to you. If I'm going to I'll take the whole lot of this. Order in the court. Order in the court.
I got a list of order. If I'm going there, I'll take a whole lot of them. Order in the court. Order in the court. Put your glasses up in the air. Let's take a toast to Sean Cole, Bob Daddy, Ken Cole. If I'm going down, I'll take a whole lot of them. If I'm going down, I'll take a whole lot of them. I said, in the club. Listen, order. If I'm going down, I'll take a whole lot of them. I said, order in the court.